remembering what the Lord has told you. Today on Coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. Now, I must apologize for my voice. Um, I've been battling something. not really sure what it is. It's just, uh, I don't know, allergies, flu. <laughs> it just doesn't seem to go away. And uh, I think it has a little bit to do with today's podcast. Now, I was recently shaken by revelation sometimes we can go throughout life thinking that we're doing the right thing we're walking according to the theology that that we know you know we're doing the best we can with the information that we have we think we're doing the best that we can i in hindsight i look back i'm like you know we could always do better and then there's this cold splash of revelation water slaps us in the face, and we look back, sometimes 14 years, and we say, how did we miss that? One thing that really frustrates me is the Lord has all the time in the world, and I don't. The Lord does not have a finite lifespan, you know, and we we do. We have like this alarm that goes off unexpectedly saying, time's up, (laughs) And we have to have everything done before that alarm goes off. The Lord doesn't get penalized for making mistakes. He's the Lord. He's the judge, and we're the defendant. And I'm so thankful and happy that we have the option to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. But the more I go along this Christian walk, the more I see that there are crowns involved that are set before me for the taking. And I also see that Many people can go to hell on my watch. And I realized that what I used to think was a game is much more serious than just chess pieces on a board. Now, there's a passage that comes to mind right now. And this passage has been coming to mind through several different facets of Revelation, just thinking and musing about what's going on in our lives right now. And it's the passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul talks about the thorn in the flesh. In 2 Corinthians 12, 2 through 10, I'm just going to read it for you. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such a one caught up into the third heaven. And I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. (laughs) Kind of like my, my voice right now. Amen. Because this situation that I'm going through right now kind of brought me to this passage, which was the key that unlocked some of the revelation that I'm going to share with you today. In verse 6, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth, seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Wow. This is hitting home even yet again. Continuing on with Paul's statement, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Now, guys, catch that. Paul has learned something. He's learned to glory in his weakness. Why? Continuing on here, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. Now, I'm certain the stuff that we've been going through recently with the house and the these sore throats and so forth are nothing compared to what Paul was talking about. But the stuff we've been going through has been making me reflect on this passage. It's like I've been learning it through experience. In this passage, we see that Paul is talking about something that happened above 14 years ago. Now, I had some experiences that happened above, right around 14 years ago, and then I also have this revelation while I'm going through this, whatever this is. Okay. Now, notice that Paul, he doesn't get too specific about what exactly happened in this spiritual encounter. In the prophetic, we don't speak everything that the Lord tells us. We only share what he wants us to share. In this New Testament post-cross dispensation of the prophetic gifting, we only share what the Lord wants us to share. We have to have a relationship with that. Or he's going to stop trusting us with the information. As we talk about the Lord being our Father, you know, the Father will tell his oldest son or whatever the information that he entrusts him to do. You know, if he says, go work in the field, the guy doesn't necessarily say, hey, the Lord told me, Dad told me to go work in the field. No, he works in the field. You know, we have to, we have to understand what we're supposed to do with the information that the Lord has given us. Now, Paul is writing about something that happened above 14 years earlier. And I believe that he was getting a revelation that took time. Like I said, the Lord has all the time in the universe. He's the author of time. We don't have all that time. And Paul's probably hitting himself on the leg going, you know, I kind of wish I understood the fullness of this revelation, that I'd sought the Lord more diligently about it at the time that I had this revelation, because now it's 14 years and I'm finally getting it. And then we're only getting a piece of it at, at, at that point. Paul then realized that because of the abundance of the revelations, that he was given a messenger of Satan to buffet him so that he wouldn't be prideful. you got to read the passage. And this, this messenger of Satan made him weak. It took Paul 14 years to finally get a grip on the revelation of the first wave of the encounter that happened above 14 years ago. The encounter happened 14 years ago, the revelation, but the understanding or the interpretation was unfolding over time, and it's still unfolding, I'm going to tell you, because he wrote it down for us to keep unpacking it throughout eternity. This secret event that was secret to Paul anyways happened in a heavenly realm or an out-of-body experience, and Paul kept it secret. Now, Mary, remember, she had a revelation from the angel. He said, you're going to have the Messiah. And she pondered on those things in her heart, right? Some things are not meant to be shared. Now, one example is Joseph. I'm, I'm going to just give you an example. Joseph probably would have been served better. He may have had a different path to becoming second of all of Egypt if he didn't necessarily share the prophetic promises or the prophetic dreams to his brothers and his parents. He may have been served a different path of destiny if he had pondered the vision of the sheaves and the loaves and the sun and the moon and the stars bowing to him. But instead, he immaturely, as a child, blurted it out. 
He may have done it out of pride. He may have done it because he was a youth. Maybe some other reason. Who really knows? Maybe God wanted Joseph to blurt out the dream so that the Lord could, through time, chisel the iniquities out of his character. Have you ever thought about that? Now, today we can only judge in hindsight. Now, these are things that I ponder. I had some heavenly visions and revelations above 14 years ago, and it hit me recently that I've been mishandling them. And I'm going to share what I've learned with you so that, you know, you don't make the same mistake that I did. I want to drive home the fact that our heavenly encounters are not something to forget about. They are to be honored and treasured and kept as frontlets before our eyes. Now, before I continue this podcast, I want you to think of a time. Remember the time. Now, you're a Christian for a reason, right? Remember a time that the Lord shared a revelation or a dream or a vision that you flat out knew was a heavenly encounter from the Lord. What did you do with that revelation? What did you do with that encounter? Did you write it down in a journal? Did you write it down in a journal and then forget about it? How often do you rehearse this in your life? Well, in the encounters that I'm thinking of right now, super-duper encounters, kind of like Paul was talking about, I basically shelved the idea. I mean, I wrote them down, and then I kind of forgot about it. You know, I'm like, here was my approach. I said, well, the Lord is sovereign. You know, he's God of all the heavens and the earth. He'll bring it to pass. But I did not keep it as frontlets between my eyes like Joseph did. Now, I'm sure, I'm going to tell you that Joseph, because, remember when it says, but persecution will arise for the word's sake and many will fall away. When Jesus is talking about the sower so in the word, he talks about persecution is going to arise for the word's sake. The word that you hold in your heart will be tested. And I'm going to tell you that Joseph kept his dreams in the forefront of his imagination when he was in prison. Joseph kept those dreams in the forefront of his imagination while he was in the pit. Joseph kept those dreams and promises, those prophetic promises of the Lord, while he was being falsely accused of rape and his reputation was being destroyed. Abraham kept rehearsing the fact that he would be the father of many nations. Every time Abraham looked at the stars, he would say, God told me to look at the stars because I have a prophetic promise. Those stars will be my children. In the sands of the sea, every time I look at the sand of the sea, I am reminded that God promised me that I'm going to be the father of many nations. Now, here's a few scriptures that I want to share with you about remembering things. Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember. Now, the word remember means to bring back to the body again. I often think about this in uh, the body of Christ. When we come together... You know, when two or three are together in the name of Jesus, there he is in the midst. We're actually reassembling. We are reassembling the body of Christ. You know, the foot, the hand, the eye, the nose, it's all coming together, and we're remembering. Well, God says in Exodus 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, to keep it sanctified, to keep it set apart, right? Six days thou shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Now, these other six days... They're not remembering the Sabbath. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Now, whose is it? It's the Sabbath of the Lord. So they come together on the seventh day. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within its gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea that all in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So God instituted something 
that we as human beings are to do, we are to remember things that the Lord shared with us. We are to remember the times that He delivered us. Amen? This is something that we remind ourselves every seven days for. Now also, another scripture that impacts me while I'm doing this podcast is Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now notice that Habakkuk had received a vision from the Lord. Notice that Paul had received a vision from the Lord above 14 years ago, and it took, takes him 14 years to write this down. Now today, as we read this letter from Corinth and the Spirit of Truth guides us, we understand that there's going to be some revelation coming forth from that initial heavenly vision. Amen? The Lord wants us to write these visions down, make it plain, and keep them in front, in front of ourselves so that we can run with it ourselves. And also, even after our mission is concluded, after the alarm of our life says, time's up, there are other people that can pick up the tablets and run with the vision. Just imagine if Paul had that revelation that, man, 14 years ago I had this great experience, and he still didn't continue to write it down. We would not have this revelation today. Here's another passage I want to share with you. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 6-9. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Now we know that we will hide the words of the Lord in our heart so that we don't sin against him. This comes from rehearsing the things that the Lord has told us, actually going out of your way to rehearse it. Now, verse 7, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. You know, these bracelets we have you know, with scripture on That's pretty cool, right? And they shall be frontlets between thine eyes. The Jews actually had boxes of scripture that they would hang over their forehead and have um, scripture between their eyes. But I believe that the Lord wants us to constantly be thinking about it. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. This is a mnemonic memory technique. To, just like Abraham looked at the stars, every time he looked at the stars, he was reminded of the promise that the Lord had given him. And if we write them on the post of our house, it's kind of an interesting thing. We realize that our house is sanctified for the Lord. We are to keep the words of the Lord in our hearts. We're to share it with our children. We're to honor it with diligence. We're to think about it all the time, lest we forget it. So before I end this podcast, Please go back to the times that the Lord has shared something with you. And if it, if it starts now, start it now. Start a habit of writing in a journal. You can hide it. You can write an electronic journal. You can use hashtags in your journals. There's many online journals that you can use. And rehearse them. What plan, like Joseph, what plan, like Abraham, is God unfolding in your life? The prophetic puzzle will start coming together as you age in Jesus. And you start saying, oh, that's what the Lord meant. And when you come into encounters with people, like you get falsely accused of rape, like Joseph did, you'll say, but God has a plan for my life. As you're about to be stoned by the children of Israel, like David was, for making, you know, a prophetic mistake, basically, he can encourage himself in the Lord his God. He rehearses what the Lord had shared with him. And these will get you through the tough times to get you through the reward. God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, please consider sharing this with your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Share it via email. Tell people about the Conrad Rocks Coffee with Conrad podcast. Also, there's a support page at conradrocks.net. You can support many different ways. And God bless you. Thank you for being in my life. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at
comradrocks.net.